Johnny Deller. Byron Kay, Intercoastal Maritime and Life. Why? How are things in dear old Boston? Here in Boston, fine. But Cod Harbor, something else again. Cod Harbor? It's a little fishing village up north of here, up near Gloucester. Yeah, I know. I handled a case up there a couple of years ago. Oh, yes, that's right. It was for Meg McCarthy, a big, blousy, brawling old gal who ran a joint she called Meg's Palace. Well, it's Meg McCarthy. After that dingy dive she was running burned down, she took the insurance money and moved away. Johnny, listen. It was Meg McCarthy who called me. Oh? Yes. Insisted that I have you go up there and see her right away. Well, she's back in Cod Harbor? And running another restaurant and rooming house. We wrote the insurance on it. What's happened up there? All she'd tell me was that if you didn't show up in a big, fat hurry, she'd cancel out on us. So what do you think? I'll tell you this. Meg is used to handling things pretty much by herself. I mean, she wouldn't have called for help unless there's something pretty serious going on. The last time, you know, it turned out to be a murder. I know. So if you're willing to pay my expenses... Go to it, Johnny. Right. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Intercoastal Maritime and Life Insurance Company, Boston office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Silver Queen matter. Cod Harbor is on the coast up near the famous old town of Gloucester, Mass. Transportation facilities are practically nil, so I decided to go up there in my own car. Item one in the old expense account, then, is four ninety-five for gas. And having got an early start, I arrived there shortly after noon. Yeah, it's quite a colorful spot, Cod Harbor, if you could somehow manage to lose your sense of smell. Or maybe if you were an artist bent on painting a picturesque waterfront. The residential section on a low hill a couple of hundred yards back from the beach consisted of a scattering of weather-beaten shacks. On the long wharf at the water's edge was an ice plant, a packing house, and a ship's chandler. At the end of the wharf, the disreputable-looking cafe and boarding house known as Meg's Palace. Alongside the piers that stuck out into the harbor were the really important part of the village, the fishing boats. There were schooners dating back to the last century and still carrying sail. There were power boats in all shapes and sizes, from 18-foot outboards to 80-foot diesel jobs. All of them used for only one thing, fishing the banks far out in the Atlantic with seines and trawls and trot lines. I walked on over to Meg's Palace wondering how much the old gal had changed since I saw her last. You know something? Meg McCarthy hadn't changed one bit. And you just listen here now, some of you lop here, blood. Hey, Meg, put down that blaster skin and let me explain. Explain, huh? Just on account of you and that scurvy crew of swabs on that stankin' tub of yours made a decent catch for once. It's no good excuse for coming over here to get drunk all over me, lovely place. Ah, you crazy old biddy, will you listen to me? No! But I tell you, I'll pay you the money. I'll pay you double for them few dishes in the broken down table they busted up on you. And I tell you to keep your dirty, offensible money to yourself, Captain Andy, and get out of here and never come back. Now get! Meg, put down that frying pan. That's right square on the top of your filthy head, I'll lay it. No, Meg, I... Oh, now oh. get before I lose it, me temper and forget I'm a lady. You hear me? I, you I see me. I tell you, Meg, if you start throwing them things at me, I go down. Oh, 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 and you stay out of here. If you hurt me, I'll kill her. You for a stem to stem. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to make it as fast as I can. Leave me out of this, you're now madhouse. Ha! Now, maybe we'll have some peace and quiet around here. For... Hey. Now, who are you standing there in the shadows? Get out! All right, Meg, just knock it off. Oh, knock it off, is it? Well, I'll show you sneaking in here like a... La... Oh, it's me love, me darling, me sweetheart, me Johnny boy. Yeah, hiya, Meg. Still throwing your weight around, huh? Ah, oh, darling. They're like a brood of crazy, troublesome kids they are, the men that puts to sea. And they loves every blinking, blooming, worthless one of them. Oh, you do, huh? Well, of course I do. That's why I make some toe the mark the way I does. Somebody's got to love them and mother them and keep them in line. 
Especially Captain Andy. The man who just left? That's the one I mean. Oh, oh come now. Come sit down and have a cup of this here delicious coffee I just brewed up in the pot. Yeah, sure, why not? It'll put some hair on your chest and build up your strength on the cut. You'll be needing it. Ah. Uh -huh. That is, if that Marty Silver finds out you're up and around these parts. Marty Silver? Sure, and he owns the Silver Queen, that leaky old tub that sits down alongside pier number seven. But here now, you have yourself a cup of this nice, aromatical, hot, strong coffee. Hmm, yeah, thanks. Nope. <laughs> Holy, what are you trying to do, murder me? Hey? Good grief. Well, now, just a minute me for oh. your fair fretted friend. Is it just snide and disparate remarks you be making about me lovely coffee, You call it? it rat poison coffee? I most certain. Now, just you look here, you hairy-brained young in Oh, no wonder there's trouble up here in Cod Harbor. Oh, is that so? Well, if you think I'm going to let you sit here and make degradating remarks about me okay, cooking... Okay, man, okay, stop waving that coffee pot and settle down. Just you listen, you swab-headed young First whisker it, snapper. will you pipe down? Quiet, will you? Now, sit down. Yes, darling. Okay. Oh, Johnny... Johnny, you reminds me so of me dear dead departed overbearing husband when you talk up to me like that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And I'd tell you if I was a few years younger and maybe a mite prettier looking in the face. Yeah. Oh, I'd tell you there wouldn't dare another girl so much as set her eyes on to you. Yeah. Oh, that's true, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Okay, Meg. But now what about this Marty Silver? Captain Marty Silver, he calls himself. And he sailed in here a few days ago from up to Gloucester, he says, in that tub he calls the Silver Queen. Says he wants to sell the old wreck. Aye, and that he will, Maggie. And who invited you in here again, Captain Andy? Uh, there's already two or three suckers bidding up to buy the old wreck from him. He's pushing them hard to make a sale, he is. Then, Andrew P. Hoggenham, you keep them from buying it until Johnny Dollar here gets through his investigation. Investigating? Well, now, where's your manners? Shake hands with them. This here is Mr. Johnny Dollar, my lover boy from way back. Yeah, hiya, Captain. Lover boy? Him? A pasty faced landlubber like him? <laughs> Just you mind your manners, Andy, and get out here and don't let none of them boys buy the Silver Queen. Not yet. Now, look here, Meg. Go on, go on with you. Or do I got to throw you out again? Well, whatever you say, Meg. But I warn you, woman, if you're being untrue to me in favor of this here Johnny Dollar. Ain't he handsome, Johnny boy? And we don't make it generally known, but Captain Andy is me very own fiancé. No. Yes, sir. And all this time I thought you only had eyes for me. Oh, well, now, Johnny... Uh, okay, okay. Now, just tell me about this Captain Marty Silver. Well, now, listen, darling. If Marty Silver finds out that I sent for you... Uh. If he finds out, you're here to investigate him. Investigate him for what? Come on, Maggie, you're beating around the bush. Oh, it's because I hate the word. Because I'm afeard of it. What word? Murder. Oh, well, I can't say that I... What? Yes, Johnny. Murder. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. You're accusing this Captain Marty Silver of murder? I'm accusing him of preparing murder. That's why me and Captain Andy's been keeping the eye on to him. Well, just keep talking, mate. Down from Gloucester, it was. He said he'd come. But he telephoned me old friend Captain Lavery up there. And? Tom Lavery said he never heard of him. Oh, well, now, look. And Tom has been living up there since every time in memoriam. Never heard of any Captain Marty Silver. So I says to myself, says I, if Captain Marty ever was there, he was using another name and maybe on forged papers. Ooh, and I thought I had a suspicious so mind. So then last night, I takes a real good look at his boat. The way the name was painted on to it. Ah, no wonder it was all fresh paint. Yeah? The count of the name before he painted over it was the Arctic Queen. Well, so what's wrong with changing the name of his boat? So I phoned up Captain Tom again, and you know what he told me? What, Meg? It was the Arctic Queen was supposed to have disappeared in a storm up there not three weeks before with the loss of all hands on board, consisting of only two. Go on. 
Them two was the skipper and the deckhand by the name of Marty Flagg. So you figure that Marty Flagg and Marty Silver are one and the same? That I do. And that somehow, under cover of the storm, he did away with the skipper of the Arctic Queen. Then he changed the name to Silver Queen and brought her down here to sell her. Dearie, that's exactly what I figured. Hmm, well, you could be right. Now, look, if his papers are forged, and that includes the registration on his boat... Oh, many's the time it's been done, Johnny Boy, and you knows it. Yeah. that a phone booth I saw outside the front door? Well, it is, but what for? I'm going to check with the Coast Guard up in Gloucester. They'll know in a minute if they have a registration in the name of... Oh, but now, wait. Yes, dearie. Let's assume that he did kill the skipper of the Arctic Queen. Well, of course he did. Now, you and this Captain Andy think he's going to commit another murder. Yes. Here in Cod Harbor. Yes. Another skipper in order to get his hands on another, uh, a better boat? Oh, lover. All right, then who? Me. What? You? Yes. But why? Because he knows I've been suspicious of him. That I've been keeping tabs on to him. And I think he's seen me when I was poking around his boat oh, last night. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, Meg. That, that's not reason enough to think he might want to murder you. Oh, it ain't, ain't it? All right, I'll keep an eye on him just to make sure. Oh, just to make sure, is it? Meantime, I'll check with the Coast Guard in Gloucester. Just to make sure he does want to murder me by letting him do it. Is oh, that it now? Meg. Yes, but... well... Well, if I can prove his boat is the one supposed to have been lost at sea, and if his registry and papers are forged, okay, then the, the Coast Guard can come down here and take care of him. Meantime... What? But what about me? Meg, look, I, I, I think you're getting all worked up over nothing. Never know that. It is taken. You pass oh, it off. No, you Meg, pass I it didn't... off like I was nothing the more of that. Well, I... And I thought you was my friend I... and my beneficiary and that you cared a little about what Listen, might will you please... But no. You like everything else of the male sex that wears the pants. Oh, no, if a no, person no, no. don't have a pretty leg or a pretty face full of powder and rouge That's... and her hair full of peroxide blonde... That's and, not true. And you... Meg, oh, will you, you shut up a minute? Now, if you just let me finish. Yes. Mr. Dollar, I'll shut up me ugly old mouth. I'll smother me grief and me poor old broken oh, heart. Poor... Look, listen. So maybe Marty Silvers is suspicious of you. Maybe he is the crook, the killer you think he is. And maybe he will try to get at you. So look, I'll make sure nothing happens to you and until I can get this other stuff straightened out. Oh, Lord, love you, darling. I knew that you wouldn't let down poor old me. Yeah, so why don't you go back in the kitchen and fix me something to eat? Oh, Johnny, love, it'll be the finest supper you ever put your teeth in. Good. Only after I've called the Coast Guard, I'll come back here and I'll make the coffee to go with it. See you later. No, just a minute. Yeah, now what? If you're trying to make some more cracks about me coffee, Johnny, darling... Yeah, yeah. Make put down that flat. I'll put it down, all right, you bug eyed young. Get out of here. Get! Meg, you are a lousy shot. Oh, I am. Am I? Yes. Oh, God love that boy. <laughs> My call to the Coast Guard proved that Meg was right, 100%. They'd never heard of a Captain Marty Silver, had no record of him whatsoever. As for the boat, well, it was pretty obvious now that he must have killed the skipper of it in order to steal it, bring it down here to sell. I promised them that I'd do nothing to alarm Silver to scare him away, but that I would keep tabs on him until they could come down here and arrest him. But I had to break that promise because of what happened exactly two minutes later. Yeah, right after I hung up that phone. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I left the outside phone booth and walked back into Meg's Palace Cafe. It was still cluttered with the pots and pans and crockery that she loved to throw at anyone who happened to disagree with her. In this case, it was Captain Andy and me, her lover boys. I heard a lot of activity off in the kitchen where she'd promised to cook me something to eat, and I hoped she'd hurry because I was hungry. But then I heard a door slam somewhere in the back and footsteps on the boardwalk that I knew led down to the piers. I wondered if she changed her mind about fixing that meal for me. But when I got to the kitchen... Meg. Meg, what's happened? Did you... What happened here? Oh, Johnny, boy, 
Thank heaven you got here and scared him away. Who? If he hadn't heard you coming in the front, he would have killed me for sure. Marty Silver. Oh, he must have been a hiding away here in the kitchen. He must have heard everything me and you were saying about him. All right, here now. Oh. Let me help you up on this chair. Oh. It's all right, darling. I think I can make it. But when I get a hold of that... Oh. There you are. But I oh. thought Captain Andy said that Silver's was down at the dock trying to sell that boat. Hey, wait, listen. Yes. Stay right here, Meg, while I get in the back of that door. What? What is it, Shh. Oh. Out of my way, Dollar. Meg, I just seen Marty Silver coming up. Meg, who done this to you? Uh, Marty Silver, Captain. I'll kill him for this. Oh, Meg, me pet, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. But where was you when Marty Silver come in here and attacked me? Like you told me to. I went back to the dock to keep an eye on him. He was right here in the kitchen. And when I went out to phone the Coast Guard... Oh, Maggie, darling, did, did, did he hurt you bad? I told you I'm all right. But if Johnny hadn't come back in here... Oh, I'll, I'll kill that dirty... Hey, rotten... Captain, you said you saw him leaving here. That I did. Where'd he go? Down to the dock to the Silver Queen. But he may have ideas for taking off, getting away from here. Well, of course, you barnacle-brained pair of... Look! Ah, what? Look there, out of the window. Yeah, you're right. Of course I'm right. That's the Silver Queen headed out to sea. Come on, Captain Andy, we're going after him. But he's got a start on us, a head start. And with the darkness and night coming on... Well, we... standing here talking about it won't get us anywhere. Come on. We cast off and made for the open sea, because far out ahead of us we could spot the running lights of the Silver Queen. Andy put her on full power, and slowly the lights of Cod Harbor disappeared astern of us. I stood alone up at the bow, staring into the blackness of the night. You keep your eye on those running lights, Johnny. We lose them, we lose the Silver Queen. I think... I think we're gaining on them, all right. Not very fast. Don't worry, boy. There's nothing out of Cod Harbor can outrun this boat of mine. Anything you can do to give us some more power? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, yes, maybe it is. Come on back here, Johnny. Take the lead. All right, you are... You see him? You see his lights from here, all right? Yeah, I see him. And then you take the wheel. All right, I got it. What are you going to do? I'm going to lift this engine cover and... There. Now, I'll get to this carburetor and see if I can keep her wide open, Johnny. That she is. Oh, that slowed us down. Just keep an eye on the Silver Queen. Good, good, that's it. That's the best I can do with it. I'll take the wheel now. We'll get back up forward. Aye, aye, sir. As we slowly but surely pulled up on her, I could see the vague shape of Captain Marty Silver at the wheel. I could see him turn and look back at us now and then. Just a few more minutes and we'd overtake the queen. But if Silver had a gun, I eased my thirty-eight out of the holster, made sure I had a full load, just in case. And then it suddenly occurred to me that if he could see us and our lights were far brighter than those in the Queen, I went on back to Captain Andy at the wheel. You won't be long now, Johnny boy. Hey, where's the switch to the cabin lights? Okay. If Silver is armed, then when we get up close to him, he'll be able to pick us off like ducks in a shooting gallery. You're right. The switch is right there inside this. No, look, look. Ah. Silver has turned them off. Turned off all these lights. We do him. We'll never catch him now. Won't we? Doesn't the spotlight work? Sure, it does. Turn it on. I, I just put out the other light. Good, good. Hey, where's the switch for this spotlight? Yeah, here. Running lights. Now the cabin lights. The switch, Captain. Now we're just as black as you The switch for the... Oh, here it is. Now swing that lighter on, Johnny, so you cover the whole horizon with it. Right. When you get it on him, I'll... Hey, what's that? It's coming about. He's going to run us down. Yeah, I see. Shove the wheel hard to port. Give it a gas. Yes, I am. He's got us in a turn. We're losing weight. Come on, pass the captain. As soon as we get back on the straight course, keep the searchlight on him. Square in his face. Maybe you can find it. Maybe, if I'm lucky, with my other hand. Oh, we'll never make it, boy. We'll never make it. Now, hold it steady. But he's an ammo. Right across the hall. Hold it steady. But, Johnny, don't you see? <laughs> You're hitting. He's hurt. Yeah. Now, more power, Andy. He's got to go to the wheel. Hey, he's reaching Andy. for the gun. Maybe the queen will run away from the gun. All right, tell you. Full power. But no, we're, we're too late. Too late. 
Well, I suppose I ought to make some crack about it being a long swim back to Cod Harbor. But I won't because it wasn't. The Silver Queen sank like a rock, and with the help of the spotlight, we finally managed to find and pick up the body of Marty Silver. Then, with both Andy and me bailing like mad, we slowly limped on back to port. And that's about it. Expense account total, including room and board at Meg's Palace and another tank full of gas, fifty-eight thirty-five. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's program. Next week, murder. A real weirdy. Because there was no one there to commit it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Olin Soleil, and Ralph Moody. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wald speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.